It was the phone call no parent ever wants to get. I was not at home, I was about six hours away. When I heard the emotion in Luella's voice, I know that there was something serious going on. She told me that our daughter had been in an accident and to get home as fast as I could. It seemed like forever uh, before I got to the hospital. What had happened is Nicole was walking down the street after work, a drunken unlicensed driver lost control of a vehicle, careened up on the sidewalk and crushed her against the wall. She had massive uh, injuries, uh, internal bleeding. If it happened in the suburbs, she would have made it to the hospital. She had 12 breaks of her pelvis alone. Uh, when I got to the hospital room, saw her there with machines hooked up to her, not really knowing what her condition was, I did what any father with any love inside of him would do. I sort of fell apart. I tried to get myself up on her bed as close as I could to her. I tried to put my cheek next to her cheek and tell her that I loved her, that I was there for her. I wasn't sure how much she was hearing of what I was saying, except I saw tears come out of her eyes. You know, I've thought about that whole scene many times. What parent would ever want any of their children to go through such a thing? And uh, if I could have chosen one of my children, it wouldn't have been Nicole. She seemed the most vulnerable of our children. That began for us four years of physical, emotional, and spiritual travail. Uh, suffering not just about the physical body, suffering uh, watching your child suffer. Uh, now, here's what you need to understand about suffering. When you're going through a moment of suffering, you don't just suffer the thing that you're suffering, you also suffer the way that you're suffering. Because suffering exposes you, it exposes how you think about life, it exposes what you think about God, it exposes what you feel like you deserve, it exposes your definition of the good life. It exposes your thoughts about meaning and purpose and hope and inner sense of well-being. You bring a whole package of things to your suffering that determine the way you suffer. People just don't suffer the same. And, and some of the darkest moments of suffering is not just the thing that you're going through. Those things, those moments of difficulty are terrible in themselves, but it's the stuff that you bring that makes that darker and more difficult and more hopeless and makes you feel more alone and more alienated than you ever were. Because God knew that between the already and the not yet, we were gonna live in a world that itself is suffering. The Bible says the world is groaning, waiting for redemption. God knew that we needed help with suffering because being his child is not having a ticket out of suffering. Being his child doesn't mean you won't suffer. Suffering somehow will enter your door. So you could argue that the Bible is just a massive treatise on suffering. It just uh, pictures from beginning to end a world of suffering. Uh, the blood and guts and dirt of suffering are stained on every page of scripture. But what the Bible does is it gives us a very, very, very different way of thinking about suffering, about why we suffer, about who God is in suffering, about what God offers us for suffering, about what suffering is intended to be and intended to do. What I want to say is this, the Bible presents this radical thought that this world of suffering that we live in, that all of us will be exposed to, is not in the way of God's plan, it's part of God's plan. And when you get that, you suffer in a very, very different way. If you're not suffering now, 
You're near someone who is. And if you're not suffering now, you will someday. And I would ask you, how prepared are you for that moment when suffering enters your door?